We're live with and Robert Drysdale. Robert Drysdale, would you like to uh, tell everyone your accomplishments out here? Uh, see, I've been uh, been in jiu-jitsu for like 13 years now. Uh, I've been a black belt since 2004 under a black belt under Leo Vieira. Uh, won a number of state championships, national championships in Brazil. Uh, won World Cup a few times. Won the Mundials a few times. Won Abu Dhabi. Won. Been fighting MMA professionally for about a couple of years now. Your record? Uh, three and zero. Oh. Three and zero. Oh. And yeah. all your fights are in Canada, correct? Correct. All in Victoria. And yeah. how much do you love this country? I actually like it a lot. Too cold. A little too cold for me. But it's 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 good for a change. You know, Vegas is a little too hot. So now I hear some, you know getting some rain and some cold is actually kind of nice. When did you say I could do this as a career? Uh, me being a lower belt. Uh, when do you say okay, I'm ready to be a purple. I'm confident. And from purple, when did you say? Okay, I could take on the world as a brown belt, and so on and so on. Uh, I think it's, it's difficult because it's process. It's not like you don't you don't. It's like you don't wake up one morning and you say, hey, "I'm an adult," or you know, "I don't." You know, it's it's not one of those things. It's kind of like a process. It's a. Uh, I can. I mean, if I had to pick one moment, I guess I'd say, I remember when I won the state championships in Brazil as a purple belt. I won the open division. It was kind of like a big bracket, and there was a lot of good guys in there, and. That's when I started thinking, oh, maybe I can actually get good at, you know, get good at this, and maybe I can start taking this seriously. Because until then, it was something I was doing every day, twice a day. But it was, it was, it was kind of like a hobby. I didn't expect much of myself. I didn't think I could do it for a living. I just really liked it. and I just stuck to it, you know. And uh, after winning like some competitions at the purple belt level, I think that's when I started getting in my head. And some, a lot of my friends were telling me, bro, you'd be good at this. You know, you just got to believe in yourself and keep going with it. I think you can be really good. And I just stuck with it. And uh, I'm very fortunate to uh, live off something I love so much. You don't have to give a percentage, but drilling versus live live drilling. You know, I, I've been getting that question more. This is a question that never came up. It wasn't coming up like five years yeah. ago. Like, I've been getting that question more, and I suspect why, where, where, where it's coming from. But I, honestly, man, like, I, I've, look, I've trained with a lot of good guys. I've, I've, I've trained with them. I've seen them trained. I've trained them. I mean, I think that drilling is important, but to me, it's, it's, it's something for you to learn a new move and for you to warm up. It's not actual training. I don't think you can get good from drilling. You know, I, I mean, I'd say back in the day, I mean, and I'd say this, you know, I'll, I'll leave modesty aside to say this. Came from Braza, which is arguably the most successful jiu-jitsu camp in history. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we had a few group of guys, but we were very, very consistent with placing in tournaments. And, you know, 2007, when we walked in Abu Dhabi, we had five competitors, and we walked home with seven trophies. That has never been done, and I don't think everyone, anyone will ever be able to do that again, you know. And, I mean, 90% of the time, we we're just trying to kill each other. It was just, we're going live, just go, go, go. And I'm not against drilling. I think drilling is important. I see some people spending way too much time on drilling, not enough mat time. But to me, that makes no sense. To me, it's 90% it's mat time, just trying to, just going at it. That's drilling. You're, when you're going live, you're drilling. You know, you're drilling with intensity, with resistance. And uh, to me, that's more realistic, you know. I, I see drilling as something for you to learn a new move. You know, like you're, you're, you want to learn that takedown, that single. You go for it over and over. It's a good warm-up. It's something you can do before, uh, 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 before, before you actually go live. But as your actual, keep, like keeping that as your actual training, to me that makes no sense. Can I uh, just add on to that with you? Off camera, you were talking about uh, if you aren't struggling to get even one advantage point or half point, do you want to explain that to the people at home, what you mean by I, I think, that? I think a good uh, way to measure uh, uh, how much you're challenged and how, uh, 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 how much you're progressing is how hard you have to work for you to get something. You know, and, and it's, it's, all, I mean, it's, it's different for everyone, you know, but if you're, ideally you're surrounded with guys that are better than you. That's how you get better. In a perfect world, you're surrounded by guys that beat you up every day. So if you're in that situation, count yourself lucky. I honestly, you know, I wish I had guys that, you know, were beating me up, making me tap every day on the mat because I know I'd get better if I were training at that, with that, that intensity. But pretty much every time you go for a point, every time you try to take someone down, every time you sweep someone past someone's guard, it should be a fight. It should be a struggle. Like, you have to, like, work your butt off. Yeah, you're working on that pass for three minutes until you finally get it. If you're passing people's guard too easily, that's not a good thing. I mean, it's not that it's – you're still learning. You're still working. But I, I, I like that resistance. That resistance teaches me – it forces me to raise the bar. That's what it does. You're not raising the bar when you're passing too easily, when you're getting that takedown too easily. You're not always raising the bar. You have to be losing for you to raise the bar. That's what forces you to do something you weren't doing before. You have to get better. You have to get stronger. You have to get faster. You have to improve your technique. Because otherwise, if you're always getting, you're going 50% and you're getting away with it, you're not really improving anything. You know, you're just kind of, you know, and I see jujitsu to me as something that if you're not getting better, you're getting worse.
You know, it's not like, oh, I'm here and I'm going to stay here. You know, when I first started training MMA, I was like, oh, don't worry about your jiu-jitsu. Just work on your hands and your wrestling. To me, that's stupid. You know, because if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. You know, I see a lot of you know, strikers that only work on their jiu-jitsu or wrestlers that only work on their hands. I don't understand that. I mean, that makes, you know, I, I don't say just, you know, only, I wouldn't only work on my jiu-jitsu, but neglect your foundation to me doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, you know, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. That's the way I look at it. Perfect. And uh, you got a new DVD just came out. Kratos yep. series. Kratos series. I wanted a different approach to a uh, uh, grappling series. Like, you know, people end up showing, you know, there's a lot you can do from spider guard and from the back or from mount or whatever, but I want to do something that no one ever done before. I've never seen anyone show anything from the cradle position. I think it's a very relevant position for grappling, you know, especially when you're having problems passing the guy's guard because it's very difficult to establish position without the gi. So slippery. You guys are always pummeling, always getting that underhook. So it can be difficult to hold position. So I started getting, you know, working more and more on the cradle. I came up from, with a number of different attacks from that position. Uh, it's a great counter against half guard players, guys trying to move themselves underneath you. That's, that's the best time to use it. Uh, a lot of times when you're getting frustrated and you really can't establish side control. So even when you get to the guy's side, you can't seem to hold him down. Uh, the cradle is a great option. Uh, I, I really like those attacks. It's some of my, some of my, probably my new favorite position to attack from. And uh, I just want to do something different. You know, I'm very proud of this production. It's, uh, it's 100%, you know, my, my production. So it, it's, I've been working on it for a while, and I'm very proud of it. And uh, we have some new ones coming out soon. So. Perfect. And where yeah. can people uh, get that DVD? Dryzojujitsu.com. Yeah. Is this uh, DVD the first of many to come that spawns off the Cradle series? Uh, no, for the Cradle, that's all I'm doing for now. I mean, as I go, I'll probably come up with more stuff, and I might do a second Cradle series. Uh, right now, I have, uh, a, a, I call it a, a Gable Guard. Okay, it's kind of it's kind of modified butterfly guard with the gable grip, and I got one film for passing the guard with the gi. It's my first gi series, so uh, those are filmed. They're being edited. They're pro I'm trying to get them out before the end of the year. I don't know if they'll be ready by then, but uh, they'll be out soon. Anything you want to tell the world? Uh, any predictions? Any fights coming up? Uh, your school, your team? Uh, well, I mean, the the school is growing. We moved to a new location. We're opening new affiliates all over the world. Uh, we have the we have an online curriculum coming up soon. Okay. Uh, and more DVDs to come. That's on the business side, on the professional career level. Uh, I'm a little disappointed. I only had one professional fight this year. Like a number of things happened, I just couldn't. Uh, uh, I couldn't get. I mean, the plan was to get four fights. I ended up getting only one. But next year, I'm scheduling my fights ahead. Like, you know, January. I want four years, four fights uh, 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 scheduled to the end of the year, and uh, hopefully. You know, jump into big shows, you know, maybe maybe in a year or so. But uh, I'm making my, my career a priority next year. I want to get at least four professional fights next year, and uh, let's see what happens from there. Actually, kind of nice. For those that don't know, your school is in Las Vegas. Yes. You want to state your address so people come visit? 2000 South Rainbow. Can't miss. It's, oh, Sahara and Rainbow. You can't. Like one of the biggest cross streets in Vegas. So. All right. Look at right. it. Any last words? Sponsors? Anyone you want to shout out? You can say it all. Uh, I want to thank the guys from Hayabusa. You know, for their support, I want to thank uh, uh, all my affiliates, all my students in Vegas, uh, for all the hard work, uh, and uh, you know, family, friends, everyone that's supported me throughout these years, and <laughs> Team Bushido, of course, and uh, you got all you guys, man. Thank, thank you very much, uh, very much for everything, and you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's a privilege to be here. It's, uh, I'm, and it's very, it's a huge privilege to do something you love. So I'm a very happy person right. for thank this. Thank you very uh, much. Next time we speak, we will be in Las Vegas at your gym. For sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you.